Hello there, YouTube. I am Necro Stevo, and it's time for week four in the season nine of the GBA. This week, we're going up against the New York Noibats, coached by Mewtwo Fan Nate. Of course, you can find his information in the description. And thank you very much, Goldola Dragon, for recording for us. In this narration, you uh, might have already noticed it's different. I'm starting it off with a team card. That's because we need to talk about something this battle. Uh, just a quick rundown of the teams. I ended up bringing a Sticky Web Unburdened Kebia Berry Slurpuff designed to anti-lead or counter-lead uh, Nagan Adele, whom I expected to be Scarf in the matchup. After the... Um, also, the Slurpuff carried Psychic to hit Nagan Adele and Flamethrower to hit the uh, Skarmori. Now, with his team, you can see um, Arcanine in there, Terrakion. Neither of them had any priority on them. And I also had a Double Dance Landorus, and I had a Shell Smash uh, Barbarical. I had a Scarf Tentacruel and a Spex Xerneas. And, you know, I would, and I also had a Scarf High Dragon. Like, I was just ready to put up Sticky Webs and go ham on this team. And really, I just needed to remove one or two things in order for either of my setup sweepers to sweep. And because he did not bring any priority, any setup at all would have swept his team. Very simply. Um, so with that game plan in mind, especially if he didn't bring Scarf and Nagan Adele, then my Slurpuff could two-shot the Nagan Adele as well, because after the Unburden activated with my Kebia Berry, I would have been able to outspeed him. So either I would have outsped his Nagan Adele and KO'd it, or I would have not outsped him and known that he was Scarfed and just had that confirmed for my own purposes. Now, uh, in chat, Goldoa admitted that he didn't prepare for Scarf Tentacruel, he wasn't prepared for Barbarical, and he also wasn't prepared for Slurpuff or Sticky Web. So really, I brought the perfect team, and this is kind of the opposite situation from last week. I had the perfect team in prep, uh, but I'm just going to go ahead and spoil it. I did end up losing this battle, and the reason why I'm talking about it in this way is because I think that there's something that we can all learn from things like this, and I think that there's also just been um, a little bit of salt with how the way that Hacks is handled in the in just general Pokemon. It's important to remember that this is it's a game, yes, but it is something that people are putting their time into, and when you're putting your time into something, you have a certain expectation of, oh, it might be worth it. But that also means you have to manage those risk factors. In this game, I missed four stone edges against Skarmori with a Landorus that had already used Rock Polish and Swords Dance. And there is almost no situation where a Skarmori should be able to KO a Landorus that's set up like that. That's just how it really should be. Um, but I will go ahead and just have the battle play out here just so you all can see what happened. But in that situation where my Landorus got KO'd like that immediately, when if I had KO'd the Skarmori, I would have just swept him outright, um, barring a roll on his defensive Sylveon, which even then I would have had a lot of HP and he wouldn't have been able to take two Earthquakes. Uh, I don't know. That's just something I want you all to kind of keep in mind there. Because this is the type of thing where I think a lot of people will have some bitterness about it and you really can't be too bitter about it it's just the type of thing where okay what happened up to that point where I was in that position like it didn't matter here that I perfectly predicted the start like I was like all right he's probably gonna u-turn here he's probably gonna go into a Skarmori I'm gonna get up my sticky web which will incentivize the Skarmori to go for defog during that turn, I can go for Flamethrower and take the Skarmory's HP down to a point to where I can definitely KO him without boosting a Continental Crush. He goes for the Defog. Now he knows that I have Sticky Web, so he's probably going to swap back out into something, most likely Noggin Adele. And so he switches back out into the Noggin Adele, and I just set back up my Sticky Web because either he stays in and he has to Defog again, or Nagan Adele comes in and he U-turns again. So the Sludge Wave situation happens exactly how I expected it to. And the Kebia Berry means that I'm living that easily, getting off a nice juicy Psychic here. And now he's in range of Myriad attacks. Uh, I did decide to go ahead and stay in there with my Slurpuff. Because now I know for a fact that he is Scarfed. And um, 
the barbarical I have, that's really important to know because that means that I need to set up two shell smashes to outspeed his Naga Nadal. Um, so I go out into my landers knowing that he's locked in a sludge wave and I go for a rock polish thinking that he would go out into something that could threaten me offensively, like a Mewtwo, because um, Mewtwo could easily take an earthquake and hit me back. Uh, but I just end up going for Continental Crush. It was a roll in my favor to KO the Skarmory just because I was running um, an Adamant Landorus. Uh, but as you kind of saw last week, rolls aren't generally, just because they're in your favor doesn't mean anything. It just means you should go with something that's more guaranteed. So I lose my Sticky Web here for no real reason, um, which means my Slurpuff was for naught, even though I did get the information that he uh, was Scarfed. And so I get to go for Swords Dance as he goes for Roost. And now all I have to do is hit him with two stone edges. I even PP max my stone edges before this, because I was like, I'm gonna be clicking some stone edges, so let's just make sure I have all eight. And we're gonna use stone edge. I just need to hit two in a row, basically to KO the Skarmori. He goes for his first Brave Bird. Just wanting to get a little bit of damage on me. But that's a three shot there with <laughs> the Brave Bird, you can see that. And I miss one stone edge, which allows him to roost back up. So now I'm in a position where I need to hit two again, which is pretty lame. And this is the situation that I was talking about before. Because if I had just hit two stone edges in a row, this would have, especially with the range of HP that my Landorus was at initially there, this would have been a snack wrap. Um, but that is not what happened, obviously. Um, my, my effort after that, after this whole missing situation goes down is like, okay, maybe I can set up with my Barbarical. Because um, my Barbarical had um, Liquidation, Stone Edge, and Grass Knot because I was worried about the Seismitoad that he could possibly bring. Um, so after that, I just go out into Barbarical. I thought for sure he was going to swap out here. And I didn't want to let the, to let the Naganadel in for free because I figured he knew that I knew that he was Scarfed. And so I was like, all right, I cannot have him go out into that and drop a Scarf uh, Draco Meteor on me. And then in addition to that, I also didn't want to go for Shell Smash and have him get to Sturdy with another Roost. So I just went for Liquidation here in case he swapped out or in case he tried to go for another one. Because um, I knew, all right, I can handle that situation either way. But alas, that is not what happened. And I know I cannot speed Naganadel. He surprised me here and he went for Thunderbolt um, over Draco Meteor, which makes sense because I could have just brought in Xerneas exactly how I did. Uh, but Thunderbolt also, um, I just thought that was an interesting bring on the Naga just because he would have been scarfed into something. He had two scarf options there, possibly three, that three of my Pokemon, if I had brought Fortress, would have been immune to. So I thought that that was an, in I wasn't expecting him to have that because I was like, oh, I could just have Landorus. But, um, but yeah, anyways though, I will, uh, kind of be thinking about this battle here a lot because even though I was in that situation early on where I was like, Man, I don't really think I can beat him down anymore because I I just kind of lost a lot of the impotence that I had there. I did have a really cool moment here. I go out into my Scarf Modest Hydro Pump Tentacruel. I hit his Mewtwo with a Hydro Pump and he has some sort of spread on Mewtwo because if he were just a regular Mewtwo with max speed, max special attack, I was a, that was a two shot. Um, but that was well out of range of a, of a two shot. So I just decided to go out into Hydragon and I know I'm Scarf, so I'm just going to U-turn and break that sub and just to see what he's going to go for here. I was like, he probably has a Psychic-type move that he's not going to go for right now. And maybe fighting like Aura Sphere with subbing Call Mine. That's what I was like. Maybe he has something like that. Um, so I just go right back out to Tentacruel. And I was correct on the Fighting-type move. He lands the Focus Blast and doesn't do very much, fortunately. But now he is in range of a secondary Hydro Pump. And I'm just going to go straight for that. Because he might not have known that I was Scarf just because of how I played it originally against the Arcanine. Um, I would have only feared, what, Bulldoze or Wild Charge from Arcanine. And I'm not too worried about either of those options with the Tentacruel. Unless it's Banded. But... Then we're in the situation against Sylveon. And this is where I'm going to kind of wrap this up here. Because from here on out, I lose to Sylveon. I don't have anything that can break through it. This is a max HP, max physical defense Sylveon. I have basically three special attackers left and a barbarical that is a minus special defense nature <laughs> so 
I definitely believe I brought the right team to this matchup. I also thank Mewtwo Fan Nate for the battle. I This is my first time battling him, and I do dislike it when the first time I battle someone new, it kind of ends up in a situation like this. I always like to use battles as my way to get to kind of know someone, and this battle just really didn't pan out in a way where I can kind of get a feel for someone through, through the art of battle. Uh, but you know, that's, that's how that pans out sometime. And if you all are still listening to this part of the battle, thank you very for, much for watching. And also I do appreciate on the fan pickums. I saw that more than usual of you chose me for your pickums, and I'm sorry I let you down this time, but that just means we really have to bring all the darkness in our entire soul hole for the next matchup. So for week five of the GBA, we will be going up against uh, Donza, um, and he is the coach of the Los Angeles Nita Kings. So look out for that match next week, and the really the, the best way to really shake off this type of loss is to just move on to the next thing and do so with all of just like that full revenge power inside of you. So you can look forward to that. And uh, thank you all again for watching. I'll talk to you soon, guys. Have a great day.